Hello, welcome to our UCE revision today. And today we have some questions from paper two. Uh, these are the other questions. Feel free to pause and do not do the numbers before looking at the at the at the guide. So those are the questions. And now let's go straight to the to the guide. And this is our um, guide here. So question one, we are supposed to 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 convert that to a fraction, and then so let's see the steps. So first step, let any unknown say x equal to to the given recurring decimal decimal number. Okay, that's our recurring decimal number. Now after that. Uh, whenever we are converting recurring decimals into fractions, we need to pay attention to the decimal part, the numbers after the decimal, the decimal point. Uh, we are lucky in this one, all the numbers that appear after the decimal point are repeated. We only have a 2 and 7. So what do we do next? Since we only have two numbers and we are working in, uh, in decimal base, then we are going to multiply by 100. And so what I do on this side is what I also do on this other side of my equation. And so many to sevens. Okay? Uh, so when we multiply, here we have 100x is equal to, now the decimal point moves since I'm multiplying by 100, 1, 2. So I have 527.2727 and so many you can write as many as you want to save it. Now after doing this, we have this as our first equation and we have this as our second equation. Now when we look at these two, uh, we should be able to see that all the numbers in the first equation are repeated and the same thing is happening in the second equation. And so when we achieve that, then we are going to subtract equation two, take our equation one. So my equation 2 minus equation 1, uh, I'll just bring my equation 1 down here, and I say minus equation 1, which is equal to, now, I pay attention to the decimal point, I just put down this one here, so that they are in line, to make my subtraction simpler, and then after decimal point in equation 1, I only have 2, 7, 2, 7, and so many other 2, 7s, oh, uh, and then before the decimal point, I only have a 5. And so we are subtracting, right? We are subtracting. Uh, we have this. So when we subtract 100x take away 1, I will have 99x is equal to. Now after this small point, everything is the same. I do not need to worry about it because it's going to turn into a 0. And now here I have a 2, a 2, 5. Okay. Uh, now from here, uh, we can go ahead and write our fraction. We can divide on both sides by 99, by 99. And when we put this off, already we have our fraction. And then the only thing we need to do is to simplify it. How do we simplify it? Uh, we need to, to, to make, uh, to use the same f uh, factors, common factors. So when I look at 99, I can try on my calculator and divide this by a 9, and then I also try and see if a 9 is a factor for, for both. Uh, please feel free, if you're not strong enough, you can even start with smaller numbers, say like a 3, because we have 9, 9. And when we sum this, we get a 9, which is also divisible by a 3. So feel free to, to start with smaller numbers. In this case, I'll do by 9. I have 11 there. And when I do this by 9, I have uh, 50, 58. Okay. So that is our final answer. 58 out of 58 out of 11 is our is our fraction. Or we can as well write it as a mixed number as five on number and three out of 11. Uh, fine. Um, let's go to, to question two. Question two. Here we are. We have been given um, uh, that we have a set F which is a set of all factors of 24 and another set G which is a set of all factors of 
30, right? And then the question is asking us to find the number in F complement intersection uh, G, where F complement uh, is the complement of, of F, where, uh, we're missing something here, where F complement, okay, it's down here, where F complement is a complement of, of F. Okay, so how do we answer this? Factors of, of 24. The easiest way to get all factors right is when you, you, you use the times table. For example, I understand when I do 1 times 24, I get my 24. 2 times 12, 2 times 12. Then uh, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. When you do this, you can't go wrong. So that means factors of 24, I can now write down this set. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. Okay, that is my set there. Then also factors of 30, or 30, I have 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, do I have 4? No. 5 times 6, uh, do I have 7? No. And then you notice that I'm, I'm coming back to to, to, to when I go to 8 and 9, I'm coming back to a 10. So this is the easiest way of getting all factors. So that means our set, our next set, set G, uh, has uh, uh, elements 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, and 30. Good. Now, uh, when we look at the question, it is talking of F complement. F complement simply means elements that are not in set F. Okay, Do we see all these elements. These are elements in set F. But now we are interested in elements when we talk of F complement. Elements not in F. Okay, not in set F. So now that we have, we are trying to find the in its intersection with set G. Then I can simply come to set G and I see which elements are not in F. This is there. All right, I see 5 is not there. 6 is there. 10 is not there. Uh, 15 is not there. And 30. So that means when I talk of F complement intersection G, in this set I put elements that are not in F, the ones we have put here, but they should be in, in this set here. That's why I have decided to pick them from here. So I have a 5, a 10, a 15, and a 30, all right? And now when I say number of F complement intersection G, uh, then the number, we count the elements, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And that should be our, our answer there. Uh, fine. Um, let's continue to the next question. Uh, question 3. Our question three, she's here. She's talking about uh, the equation of a line whose gradient is negative a half, okay? Negative a half. And it passes through the point minus four, five. So here we are. We are talking about the equation of, of a line. That's what we need. So given the gradient and a point, then that means we can create another point. Okay, let's first write down, we have this point minus 4, 5, and we say, what if on that line we have another point? We don't know it, so we call the x coordinate x and the y coordinate y. And when we have two points, by definition of gradient, gradient means change in the, in the y values, so y minus 5, divided by the change in the, in the x value x minus minus 4. But now this should give us the gradient, which is negative, a half. Are we okay with that? And now from here, we can go ahead and, and, and do some cross multiplication from this step. So I'll put brackets 2 into y minus 5 should equal to negative 1 into x plus a 4. I hope you have seen how my two minuses are turning into a plus. So from here, I need to open brackets. So 2y minus 10 is equal to minus x minus 4. And with this statement, we can go ahead and put like terms together. 
so that we have 2y is equal to minus x. This is minus 4. When I bring minus 10 to this side, it becomes minus 4 plus a 10, which is the same as 10 take away 4, and this gives me a plus 6. Uh, that's the equation of the line we, we are looking, looking for. Okay, uh, or alternatively, what if I do not like to use this method? We can also use the general equation. Remember the general equation of a line? y is equal to mx plus c, right? Whereby this y here stands for the y coordinate. Now when I look at this given point, the first one is the x coordinate, the next one is the y coordinate. So I will substitute O, and then the m is our gradient. So I'll substitute and say 5 is equal to minus a half times minus 4 plus a c. Okay, uh, we can do some multiplication here, 1 uh, minus 2, and when you multiply here we have 5 is equal to a positive 2 plus a c. Which number can I add to a 2 to get a 5? That number should be a 3. And so now, having obtained the value of, of c, we can rewrite our equation and we say therefore, we have y is equal to minus a half. Remember, this is the gradient times x plus c. And our c is a positive 3, so we say plus a 3. So this is our answer. When you look at the two, the eyes might, might uh, I like it to say that it's not the same. But when you multiply here by 2, by 2, by 2, you notice this becomes 2y, this becomes minus x, and this becomes a positive 6. So uh, the two equations are exactly the, the same. Um, let's focus now on question, question 4. Question 4, we are told a saleswoman and is a basic salary of this, okay? So that means she's paid that amount um, uh, by the company that contracted her. At the same time, uh, she also gets 8% 8 8 um, of the monthly total sales uh, as commission. And in a certain month, she was able to, to sell all this, okay? She was able to sell uh, this amount here, and we are supposed to work out her income for that month. Fine. So now, here, what do we start with? We start by working out the, the commission. The commission is some small money that is given to you, and it is usually of the total amount of goods that, that you sell. So 8%, 8 out of 100 times the total she had sold in this month here, 1,350,000, right? Uh -huh. So when we simplify this and that, uh, how much does she get as commission from here? Her commission is uh, 108,000, okay? Make good use of the calculator there. I've just put off these two zeros, you multiply this number. Now, now that we know her commission, we can uh, go ahead and get her monthly salary. So what is a monthly salary? That means it will be the basic, uh, this part that she gets first, plus her commission in that given month. Okay, so this is what the company gives her. Even if she has sold nothing, it is basic salary to help her survive. And, but since she made some sales, so now we are adding a certain percentage of her sales to this amount, and this gives us 228,000. So that means in that month, that is that saleswoman commission. Nice. Um, let's go to, to our next question. And the next question, here we go. Here we are. Uh, it is talking about logarithms, all right? Uh, let us talk about this logarithm number here. We are supposed to simplify it. Uh, look at the question. When you look at the question, we have more than one operation. Please do not run away from this uh, uh, st uh, statement here. Whenever you see you have a number of operations in math, make good use of this. So I'm writing it there, board mass. So 
uh, when I employ board mass, board mass will tell me I need to add first. So I can rearrange my statement and I write log in base 10 or 15. By the way, when we do not have a base here, it means the base is 15. Then I want to write plus log in base 10 of 60. Take away. Now in logarithms, when we have a number down here, we can take it back here so that it becomes a power, right? 10 to power to power 2. Okay. Now from here, what do we do when we are multiply when we are adding two logarithms? When we are adding two logarithms, we can write one logarithm statement. And what happens to these two numbers? We multiply them. Now we save here. Okay, we multiply them. And from here we have log in base 10 of 100. Now after doing that, uh, you can guide and multiply and simplify this. Uh, I want to focus on the two statements. What do we do when we are subtracting two logarithms? Uh, this is equal to, we write one logarithm, uh, we have multiplied, but then since I've written down one logarithm statement, then I'll divide the two numbers. So the two numbers I'm talking about are now this first number here and this one here. And so I can simplify, I can simplify, uh, I can simplify, okay? Feel free to use your calculator this step. Uh, do not... Uh, uh, what about this? You can use your calculator. So when I multiply, I end up with log in base 10 of 9. Is there no I can simplify this further? No. So that would be my final answer for that given uh, question. Um, question 6. Uh, question 6. Let us look at, at, at this question 6. It says if M is directly proportional to the square of of n okay that's the first statement we need to understand directly proportional so m is directly we use this symbol uh, is directly proportional to the square of of n and in mathematics when you say things are directly proportional you mean they move in the same direction if m increases then also n squared increases okay so we can make this to look even easier by writing it down in this format in an equation form that m is equal to k times n squared now the k is what we call the constant of proportionality that's why i have now introduced the equal signs now we are told that when n is 2 m has to be 1. So that means I can comfortably put my 1 here. 1 is equal to k times 2 to squared. Okay, when we multiply this, we have our 1 equaling to 4k. When we divide on both sides by 4, we have that k is equal to 1 out of 4. Okay, so I can rewrite my equation and I say m is equal to a quarter n squared. Uh, nice. Then what do we do after that? After that, uh, let's look at the second part. The second part says, find the value of m when n is equal to negative 5. So we need to do some substitution. We are interested in finding m uh, when n is minus 5. So what, what I do to my minus 5? When I'm squaring a negative number, I put it in brackets. Please, even when you are doing this on the calculator, put the number in brackets so that you get the right answer. And when I square this on the, on the calculator, it means minus 5 times minus 5. It, give, it gives me 25. 25 times 1 is 25 out of 4. And that's our answer. Or we can go ahead and also write uh, six old numbers and a quarter for those who want to, to simplify. Uh, fine. Question seven. Uh, we are supposed to find the point, the point of intersection, okay, of this given two, two lines here, okay, point of intersection of these two lines here. Now, if we want to find the point of intersection of those two lines, 
That means we need to solve the two equations simultaneously. Okay? So I have arranged them here, the first equation, and this is the second equation. Allow me to, to talk about elimination method when I'm solving this, but you can also use any other method for solving these two equations simultaneously. Okay, so when I look at this, I see the coefficient of x in the first equation is a 3, but here I have 1. Let me make good use of that. I want to eliminate the unknown x first. So how can I make sure I have the same coefficient? That means I need to multiply the second equation by 3, okay? And I multiply everything by a 3. So I'm rewriting it as 3x plus 3y is equal to 12, okay? Then after that, I, I can bring down my first equation here. I'm simply copying it down, okay? Uh, and then since these two have the same coefficient, I know when I subtract them, this will cancel. Same sign, subtract. Okay, we can use that. So when I subtract this, take away this, it gives me a zero. I do not need that zero. Then this is a positive three y, take away positive two y. This gives me just one y. Okay, is equal to 12, take away six, which gives me a six. And when I get the, the, the one of the unknowns, I can use one simpler equation. So the simpler equation is x plus y. So I'll say x plus y is equal to, sorry, I do not want to, 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 to use all that. Uh, let me just say, instead of y, I want to go straight. What's my value of y? My value of y, I have already worked it out. It is a 6. So I want to say x plus 6 should give me a 4. Okay, I've only used this. So instead of y, I'm substituting it with 6. Which number can I add to 6 to get a 4? That number should be a negative 2. Feel free. When you take 6 to this side, 4 minus 6 is negative 2. So, have we answered the question? Not yet. The question says point of intersection. And so the point should be given in coordinate form, starting with the x coordinate, followed by the y coordinate. So, that's our answer there. Uh, for that question and here we are question two question two uh, question two talks about uh, it talks about a net of a right triangular pyramid a net simply means like a map okay so that means when we fold this we should form a right triangular pyramid and we are supposed to work out values a b and and see, let's see, when I look at this given part, I can see that this is a right angled triangle and, and I can apply Pythagoras theorem. So straight away, I'll say that the longest side squared should give me the sum of the squares of the two shortest sides. And so A should equal to square root of, when you square this plus this, you should be able to get hundred so this gives me 10 centimeters nice okay then let's go to B look at this net here uh, if we add fold this to form the right triangular pyramid you will uh, be able to, to see that this edge here and this edge will come together to form one edge of the right triangular pyramid so that means B is equal to B is equal to to six centimeters. Okay. Then uh, what about the C? When we fold so that this comes up, it comes here and it stands here. Then we need this to cover. Okay, so that we cover. And so when we cover, that means this should equal to to this side here, or it should be the same as this this side here. So that means the value of C is also supposed to be 10 centimeters. Please, if you want to see how I get to see this last two easily, try and cut out this shape. Get a piece of paper, try and cut out. Even if you do not measure, uh, cut it out and try and fold. You will see what I'm, I'm talking about. Okay, question nine. Question nine talks about 
the point S, which is minus 2, 6, and the point T, uh, there are two points. And we are supposed to find the coordinates of R if vector OR, now this being bold means vector OR is equal to 4 times vector OS plus a quarter vector OT. And they have talked and uh, they have told us and confirmed that O is the origin. Okay? So now, when I'm plotting this point on a squared paper, uh, remember always if I want to plot this point, I'll need to go to the origin so that I move minus 2. That means 2 steps to the, to the left and then 6 steps upwards. So uh, since I start from the origin, that means when we say point S is this, then it means, uh, it means vector OS is equal to minus 2, 6. We simply write it in, in a column vector form. Also, this point T, if I have to plot it, then that means I'll need to go to the origin, three steps to the right, three steps up. And so we call it vector OT. So we simply write it in, in a column, a, a, a column vector form. So already we know OS and we know OT. So from here, that means we can go ahead and substitute. And we say we have 4 times OS, which is minus 2, 6. Uh, plus a third times OT, which is 3, 3, okay? And so we can now simplify this times that, minus 8, this times this, 24, uh, plus a third times this, 1, a third times this, 1, okay? Then when we are adding, we add this separated from this. So that means up we have, when we add minus 8 plus 1, minus 7, and down, 24 plus 1, 20, 25. And this is our vector O, OR. And remember, I've just said, when we say OR, it simply means I'm starting to move from the origin. And the moment you start from the origin, that means, therefore, the coordinates. Remember, the question is saying find the coordinates of R. The coordinates will be written simply in coordinate form as minus 7 with a comma and 20, 25. So that is our, our answer there. And, and let's look at our last question today. Our last question today. Okay, our question 10. Uh, it says a cylinder has a radius of 3 centimeters and a height of 5 centimeters. Okay, so if this is our cylinder, I've tried to sketch it here. This is our 3 centimeters here. And then the height is 5 centimeters. And we are supposed to find the area of the curved surface. Now, when we talk of the curved surface, we simply mean this part here, okay, around the cylinder, okay? And so, how can we easily uh, know about the curved surface area is when we cut it. That's why I've used this red line here. I cut it from this side to this side through the diameter. I cut it downwards, and then I cut it through the the diameter. Now what do we observe? When you cut this, then the height will be the same, okay? Because I've, I've simply uh, cut it from here, up down here. Then when I cut this and I open it, you see this? This is a, this is circular. So when I cut it, it opens from here to here. Uh, that distance is what we call the, the circumference. Do you see this circumference? So when I cut this, then it opens so that this is circumference, and remember circumference is given by 2 pi r, okay? Uh, then after the cutting, the shape that we have is simply a, a rectangle. And so to find the area of this curved surface, we simply need to multiply length by width. It. So that means our curved surface area should equal to 2 times pi, I can, I, since we, we do not have any given value of pi, I can use 22 out of 7, I can use 3.142 or 3.1, uh, 3.142 is better, 3 decimal places, uh, but let me use the fraction the way it is, times the radius which is 3, then times the height which is 5, remember the area of this shape is length 
times width. And when we multiply this on our calculator, uh, we should be able to get a number with so many uh, decimal places, but we can write our final answer as 94.286 to three decimal places. That's uh, enough. Uh, thank you for, for watching this.